once again, good morning those to you watching via YouTube and listening via podcast. I trust you guys are ready for God to do a new thing in 2017. Who of you can tell me for yourself, do you easily forget someone that wrongs you or hurts you? No? Sometimes. Sometimes? Forget, not forgive, forget. 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 Who of you often, or should I say, are able to forget the hurts of the past, or the losses of the past, or the frustrations of something that's happened to you, or the ill treatment, or the harm that's been caused to you, or the unfair treatment? Sometimes, sometimes not. Uh, only if you've dealt with it. You forget? Yeah? Who of you can remember when you were hurt as a kid by a friend? Yeah? Who of you can remember when your spouse l last hurt you? Anyone? Long time ago. Do you remember when your kid hurt you? Deeply. Do you remember when your mom or dad spanked you on the bum stool? Hello? Now, do you think it's important to learn to forget? Mm. But can you forget? Because it's in your mind, but in the computer. And then sometimes you just open a cupboard and everything comes down. Some of us have Alzheimer's, so it's easier to forget, you know? So. <laughs> Or dementia, or whatever you want to say. <laughs> but do you think it's important to forget? It's important to forgive. So often we don't forget. Okay, I've titled my message Forgetting the Past and Straining for the Future. And my first point this morning is we must let go of the old in order to take hold of the new. And we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17 a very well-known scripture. And it says there, Therefore, if, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Who of you remember your past life? Or some of you still in the past? The minute you give your life to the Lord, irrespective of what you have done here, it's gone. The, literally, the slate is clean. And I believe... That when you regurgitate that back to God, he th he, he, I think he like thinks, but what are you talking about? It is gone in his eyes. The Bible says the old is gone and the new has come. It's like a new slate, a new beginning. It's like taking a board with this painting and taking it and wiping it white and you cannot read back there. And, you, and sometimes we say, but you know this and this I did. And he's thinking, but I only see a white, white slate, and you are, you are reading stuff there, and he's thinking, but you're, you're regurgitating the past, and he's forgotten that. Because for him, the old is gone, and the new has come. And if we want to take hold of new things that God is wanting to do in and through us, you have to let go of the past. And in many respects, we need to forget even our successes so that God can take us to greater success. And I believe those are, that those are part of the enemies that haunt many of us. Is our inability to forget. There are certain things, of course, like you say, your computer just doesn't forget. But if it has a stranglehold on you, then there's a trouble. Then there's a problem. Because you'll never be able to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus has taken hold of you. So I'm asking you this morning, what is it that you need to let go of so that literally the new can come? Who of you were fired and you just cannot let go? Or unfairly treated? And God is saying today, if you want to take hold of the new that I'm desiring to bring forth in your life, you have got to let go. The question is, are you willing to let go? 
And the minute we say, I choose to forgive, to forget and let this thing go out of my life, I can walk into a, a, a new beginning and a greater future, which I believe that God has and desires for us. We read in Revelation 21 verse 5, G, uh, says there, he who, has, who he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trust, trustworthy and true. And I'm not, t- I'm, I'm just putting it in there. All I'm s- saying by that is, God is able to literally make all things new. Irrespective of how you might have stuffed up in the past, how you might have messed up, how you might have, have boxed up in the past, he says, I can make all things new. Do you want God to make all things in your life new this year? But we have to let go of those. Th- and there are things in, in many of our lives that we hold on to, and God is saying, just let go. Do you remember that picture that I once sh- showed of, of a guy's wrist blood? From, from a rope and all he had to do was just let it go. And sometimes we need to let, it, let those issues in our lives that are holding us back, let, just let it go. Because God wants to do a new thing. He wants to new, do a new thing in all of our lives that he can take us in to the purpose and the future that he has destined for us. Amen? So we must let go of the old in order to take hold of the new. Number two, we must be careful... We must be careful of the way we live and what we allow in our lives. Excuse the spelling there. Ephesians 5 verse 5 to 7 says, Be careful, be very careful, not careful, be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Who of you make use of every opportunity that you have? Who of you are very careful in the way that you live? You think you are? Do you, do you cherish every second, or should I say every minute, every second of every day for the rest of this year, for the rest of your life? No? No? You open. <laughs> we have good intentions, isn't it? There's so, such a short while still left, and I must make the best of everything and live such a good life that I can be an example and be positive that I am going to. Okay, so the question is, we in, God doesn't want us to live on our good intentions, and so often we do, and we judge others for what they do and ourselves by our good intentions. Hello. Yet the Bible says, it doesn't say be careful, but it says be very careful then how you live. For the days of evil. Are you careful in the way you live, in the way you talk, in the way you think, in what you uh, allow into your life, into your space? I believe the most precious, one of the most precious things that you and I have is time. And Satan will bring everything every spanner that he can to, to waste your time. To bring distractions in your life. To bring lies in your life so that you just exist and you don't live. And God wants us to live to the full. But without Him in our lives, you're just existing. You're not living. And then it says, make use of every opportunity. When God places something on your path, do you, do you use that opportunity that he has afforded you, or do you squander it? How much of our time do we waste watching TV? And I'm not saying, I'm not saying you can't watch t- TV, come on, I mean for heaven's sakes, all of us watch TV, okay, or a movie. But do you use it as a do you use it as a, just an enjoyment now and again, or do you use it just to pass life by? 
Who of you spend life gambling or watching Facebook 24-7 and life just goes by one day, next day, and you've achieved nothing? Hello? It is one of the greatest stealers of time. And Satan will use that to distract you from becoming intimate with him. It can either be a blessing or a curse in our life. Would you read Matthew 12, verse 33 to 37? I'm, I want us just to understand that God is wanting to change things here, deep inside of us. Mark 12, verse 33 to 37 says, uh, uh, Matthew, Jesus speaking, okay? Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit okay you brood of vipers jesus says that hey oh jesus gentle meek and mild as many people think how can you who are evil say anything good for out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks we need to understand when you say something that is vile or wicked or ungodly or hurtful towards someone else you must know you have a problem of the heart not of the mouth you need to know there's a transformation in your heart that needs to take place. Okay? The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every, every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned. By what you say... You will be either acquitted or you will be condemned. That's why the Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. If you choose not to, you will go to hell. Not God didn't send you, you chose to go there. And sadly, the world thinks God sent them there, but actually they chose to go there. It is based on choice. You cannot say God sent you there. Okay. So here it says... We need to make sure that we store up good within us so that when the day of someone stepping on our toe comes, that what happens? We react in a godly manner. That we act in a manner that is godly. And they think, ooh, how's that? Why? That is what's going to change this world. Where they look at this world and they say, wow, those people are Christians because they are Christ-like. So may we be seen as God-fearing people that allow God to change us, us. And we are slow to speak and quick to listen. So be careful then how you live. Because remember the days are evil. And make use of every opportunity. Number three, we must make every moment in life count. That's what you said, Maury. We need to make every moment in life count. Do you make every moment count? Or should I say, do you try to... Ensure that every moment counts in your life. Did you shake your head? Are you going to change it and say this next year when I ask you? Luke 10 verse 38 to 42 it says, As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted. Martha was what? Distracted. Martha was? Distracted. What was she? Distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. So she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. Does that give you a hiding? Here is Mary and Martha, and Lazarus wasn't there, but it was their home. Jesus comes to visit. And here's the one sister preparing and getting everything ready for the meal. And here's Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, having intimacy with him. 
in relationship. Martha doing, getting, what was she? She was? She was distracted. Did these things have to be done? Some other time, did it have to be done right then and then? Hello? No, it did not have to be done then and then. This is the problem. When we have the opportunity to sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and get to know Him and allow Him to speak into our lives, we need to seize the opportunity. Because that season might dissipate or it might disappear. And there might be silence. So when you have the opportunity to sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, leave those things, leave the preparation, leave the coffee, leave the computer, and come and sit at the feet of the Lord Jesus and have intimacy with Him, have relationship with Him. And so often in our lives we are distracted by so many things that are actually insignificant. Do you know Facebook's insignificant? Do you know TV's insignificant? Do you know your spouse is insignificant? Do you know your family? If you do not have this, all these things are actually pointless. Though we gain the whole world, yet lose our forfeit our soul. What does it help us? And so often we are busy with the distractions instead of doing what is most important, and that is having intimacy with Him. So, uh, are you careful in the way you live? Do you make use of every opportunity that you have to sit at His feet? Do I? And Jesus said to her, see, and He says it very nicely, you're worried and it's upset about so many things, and you are maybe worried and upset about your finances, or pit pompis that said this to you, and this one that didn't do this to your phone, you'll wish you happy birthday, and all these insignificant, irrelevant issues. And you allow those to bog you down instead of forgetting and letting go so that you can do what is most important, and that is have relationship with Jesus Christ. And allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your life. And minister healing that you can let go and that you can go on to what he's desired and called you for. So, may I ask you, what is distracting you? What is your distraction? Hello? What is distracting you from sitting at the feet of the Lord Jesus? We must make every moment in our life count. And we, many of us try. But then we need to also say, Lord, forgive me for the allowing so many things to be distract me from intimacy with you. And if you want to let go and take hold of the new things that God has desired for you to take hold of, you have to say, Lord, I choose to let go of these distractions. First you. And all those distractions and worries and concerns will eventually fall into place. All that preparation had to be done, but it did not have to be done right then and there. Because the most important thing is intimacy with Him. And Jesus said, she has done what is better and it will not be taken from her. The intimacy that you have or don't have should I say, the th intimacy you have, God says, I will not take that away from you. I will keep having a relationship with you. And I will take you from here to here. And I will bring a new revelation and understanding, but you have to choose to let go of the distractions. And I want to encourage you, make every moment count and let go of the distractions. And I don't know what's your distraction. That's irrelevant. What is relevant is letting go of that so that I can have intimacy with Him. And may we do that this year. Number four, we must understand that our lifespan is limited. Who, who understands that they're all born with a self-destruct button? Do you know that? 
Hello? Do you know you're born with the self-destruct button? The day you are born, you slow, you, you have this like, and then slowly. Do you realize you're on this, this part of the bell curve? Yeah? The older we get, the, the more we realize how precious life and time is. Job 14 verse 5, it says, him, Man's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his month and have set limits he cannot exceed. And the, and the younger we are, the more we need to realize that our lives need to count. And count for the glory of God. We can achieve many things. All of us can achieve many things. Many different things. But if we do not achieve what God has planned and had purposed for us, we've wasted our lives. We've experimented with life. And we've, l we've existed and not lived. And I want to encourage you especially those old folks. Many times, I think when we get old, we think, oh, well, you know, my days have finished. I, I believe your days have just begun because you have got the most to impart into other people's lives. Hello? Your wisdom, your knowledge, your expertise, your maturity. The Bible even talks about older women imparting into the younger women. The older men imparting into the younger men. And I would encourage you, don't shy back from that. That is a calling that all of, our, all of the old folks have. Keep showing into the younger men's lives. And it's actually shocking and it's frightening how my wife and I often speak about it and she sh wishes that they would reinstate, uh, what do you call it, um, going back to the army, you know, being called up to the army because we are seeing men becoming... I don't know what you want to call it. I can I say wussies? Yeah. They're no longer men. They cannot stand up. They don't treat women with honor and respect as the weaker sex. Not weaker in mentality or intelligence, but weaker physically. And there are many things that we have lost. And we as the older men are need, to, need to impart that into the children. It is, if, if it's this generation of failing in that regard, it is the older generation's fault. Hello? Hello? We were sitting around the table uh, for, for dinner last night because my brother was going back to Joburg. So we couldn't do it this morning. And we, said we prayed. And then afterward the little ones ran for the table. And one, my brother-in-law said to me, in the past that would never have happened. He said that the, the children would always have gone second. Would have always been the adults first and then the children. Am I wrong, right? Well, he said that. And then we spoke and actually whose fault is that? Who trains a child in the way they should go? A child? No, the parents. And if they fail or they don't do things according to a, 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 a godly manner or a civilized manner, we are to blame. And we need to uh, accept responsibility and rectify it. Hello? So I want to encourage you, old folks, sow into the younger people's lives. We need you to sow into our lives. Do not think we know it all or we're arrogant because that's not the truth. We, we need your impartation. And you need to impart. Not just to feel that you're worth something, but because there's a need in the younger generation's lives. Amen? And then lastly, we must all have our own, if I call, can call it bucketless or purposeless or... Um, future list or achievement list. What, call it what you want. Who, have you seen the bucket? It's a good movie. In certain degrees, it's quite inspiring. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And I believe that all of us need to say, Lord, what is your purpose for my life in 2007, or even my whole life, but what is it that you purposed for me to fulfill here in 2007? And then go and plan accordingly and then live out those plans. Otherwise, what we can do is we can go and scribe a whole lot of, I want to do this and achieve this, and we do nothing about it. You have to have an action plan that you check up and make sure that you live by to get it fulfilled. 
So, who of you know the purpose of God? Or you know your plans? Sometimes God scraps our plans and says, no, 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 this is my purpose. So we first find out his purpose, and then we begin to plan accordingly. And I would say the most important thing is get into right relationship with him. Forget the distractions in your life, church. <coughs> Pray every day. Spend time in his words. Spend time with your family. Take your wife out uh, every now and again for coffee or a date. Even your children. Get connected with them. There are many things you can look at there. William uh, Gladstone once said, Tell me what the young men of England are doing on Sunday and I will tell you what the future of England will be. That is frightening. Do you catch it? It, is, it should be on screen. Tell me what the young men of England, or tell me what the young, or tell me what South Africans are doing on Sundays and I will tell you what the future of South Africa holds. Put God last and we will become nothing. Put God first and live according to his ways. And we have a country to be reckoned with. And I think we must start a whole thing, make South Africa great. Not again, a, make South Africa great. Hey, what do you think? I say yes. <coughs> but this for me just shows you what he's saying here. Is if a country does not live by God's ways and put God first... They are doomed. However, if we put God first and live accordingly, we are in for a great awakening in this nation. But it starts with you and I, and may we allow God to start an, a new thing in this nation through us. Life is what happens to you while you're making plans to do something else. So live according to the purpose of God and become all that He's called you to be in 2007. Amen. Seventeen, my head, can you believe? <laughs> <coughs> I found this. Yeah, I, I, I don't believe any of you have received this on your WhatsApp. So you get so many different things. So here we go. During this year, may you have enough happiness to keep you sweet, enough trials to keep you strong, enough sorrows to keep you human, enough hope to keep you happy, enough failure to keep you humble, enough success to keep you eager, enough friends to give you comfort, enough wealth to meet your needs, enough enthusiasm to make you look forward to tomorrow, and enough in determination to make each day better than the day before. But may God be number one this year. And may you focus here above everything and say, Lord, I repent for, the f for allowing this, these distractions to, take, to have taken root in my life coffee and then computer and then all the worry of finance. Forgive me for that. Get this right and all those things will come thereafter. God said that. And he's not a man that he should lie. Lord, we come before you in repentance. We come before you in humility and say, Lord, we are so sorry for allowing so many things to distract from our relationship with you. We choose this day to forget and to let go of those things that are holding us back from the higher calling to which you have taken hold of us. Lord, I thank you that you have a dynamic plan for each and every one of us, irrespective of our age. And Lord, I pray that we would take the mantle that you've placed upon us and that we will fulfill the role to which you have called us for 2017 and we will become everything that you've called us to become that we would do what you want us to do this year and we thank you that we realize that it starts at the foot of your feet and so we come before you at your feet and say holy spirit come and minister into our lives we pray that as we get to know you that you would uh, reveal things that we've never seen before and that we would love you more as each passing day goes by. 
And we pray that this nation will become a nation that serves you, Lord Jesus. That it would be a nation that devotes itself to the God Most High. And we ask you to have grace and mercy for this nation. And that you would have grace and mercy with us. And as we let go of the past, that you would take us into a greater, brighter, happier, more successful, more prosperous, more exciting, more exhilarating, more god for future. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Mm-hmm.